Four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, let's sing. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett. You're not seeing me yet because the first uh, half hour of our program, or 25 minutes of our program, is going to be audio driven. Uh, and it's because we go and see an old friend of ours, and we do it in a very, very special way. We'll just do it in a second here. Special way. I'll say that again. All right, let's do this. Uh, it's, uh, we always like to uh, call this person so that they just do an original opening for us. Let's see here. We're calling Steve Pearl. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Come on. Come on. Come out to Kingsburg Amusement Park. Play the games, ride the rides, have the fun. Score a hooker, get some crack, then go home. Kingsburg Amusement Park, Route 42, Paramus, New Jersey. Close January 1st to December 30th. Come on down. Hello? Yeah, I remember that. That was the worst right, who- That was the worst jingle of all time. It was like it was written by somebody's... <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it rooted itself into your brain and you couldn't get it out of your head, so it worked. Come out to Kingsburg. I mean, did you ever like go there? Did you, did you ever go? This was a, let me tell people because they don't live in New York, that this was a amusement park in, I think it was New Jersey, right? Yeah, somewhere and, like and, that. And, and, it had, no it, and it had the cheapest jingle in the world. You know, just come out to Kingsburg Amusement Park. We have <laughs> rides. We have toys. We have things. You know, it, 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 I could have written it. It was that bad. And then, then. You can picture, yeah, you can picture a bunch of methadone addicted clowns jumping up and down to, the, <laughs> yeah. to that song. And then that was accompanied, because it was television, <laughs> by pictures of the most disgustingly old-fashioned, fucked-up uh, rides you can possibly imagine. Remember? They were like... Oh, yeah. It was like, <laughs> you rent them from the mob, you know? <laughs> hey, we got rides for you. They start, they stop short, and the roller coaster goes off the track once in a while, but they're cheap, you know? These are the kind of rides you would find at street fairs, you know? I, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, I guess it's... I don't think it's there anymore. I don't see ads I for doubt it. it. I doubt it. It, it hasn't lasted like the good old Unisphere. <laughs> well, no, you know. <laughs> it, proudly rotting against the New York skyline. <laughs> if there was, a, 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 you know, any kind of God in this world, a Kingsburg Amusement Park would no longer exist. So I assume, yeah. uh, believing that maybe there is a God, uh, or, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'm an atheist at the present time, but if there is, that there is no Kingsburg Amusement Park. And I would not take my kid there. And it was the very reason why Walt Disney uh, went and um, uh, started uh, Disney World in uh, Disneyland because he wanted a clean amusement park. Yeah. You know, he didn't want one of these. <laughs> it, was, it was like Rockaway's Playland in New Jersey. It was like, you know. Yeah junkies and garbage and a few rides here and there and a couple of prizes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's not uh, do that too much because they might still exist and then we'll get sued. But oh, then yeah. again, but for us to boy, be... I told those Kingsburg Amusement Park lawyers are badass. Look out. Yeah, but if they were really that bad, uh, uh, <laughs> if you know, if they really want to sue us, then I'd be really get glad because it would mean we had more listeners than the two that listened to us. So, you know... There you go. No such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I seriously doubt the place made it to 1976. Uh, I think, no, I because... I think Peter Lemon Jello's no, career lasted no, longer than No, excuse me. I, I came to New York City, started working here in, well, yeah, 19, in the 1970s, or it was 1969. I remember that ad probably going almost to the end of my time here, which is about 1980. What was uh, was it called Kingsburg Amusement Park? Yeah, I think so. I think it was Kingsburg Kingsburg Amusement Park, somewhere in the Kingsburg. The of New let me Jersey. let me look it up here. Kingsburg. See, if 
find a commercial on YouTube. Uh, let me see here. G. Kingsburg. Uh, well, so far, no amusement news. Uh, amusement park. M amusement park directions. Beautiful. Got to get the. Yep. He. We lost him. We lost him, folks. Who knows why we lost him? Well, we'll, we'll try and get him back here. Hold on a second. Let me go call him. There we go. He'll, he'll probably pick up now. What the hell is going on here? I, I have no idea. I have no idea, but I found... Now we'll tend your fire. What happened? Here is the horrible... There is no God. Okay? There is no there God. There is no God. I and will. the reason there I is no guard, God is there is still Kingsburg Amusement Park... Voted number one in New Jersey. Lord have mercy, it's still there? It's still here. Holy crap. R rides and attractions. <laughs> Let's see. Kingsburg Amusement Park. I thought it would have been like a, you know, a crack house now or uh, you know, maybe a clown college. Or they something. have the Frog Hopper. All right. The Tornado. <laughs> Pharaoh's Fury, which is one of those things people get in and then it goes back and forth and back <laughs> and forth. There's Moby Either rise you can build at home in your basement. <laughs> There's Moby Dick. It says read more. What is Moby Dick about? Uh, Moby I Dick lifts 24 riders on an undersea uh, uh, adventure, spinning in a clockwise and counterclockwise motion that will thrill parents and kids. Be prepared to reboard after the action is over because this is one of the park's favorite attractions. Whoa, you may need a stiff drink after this one. That's the Moby Dick. There's the Looping Star, the Lupo Plane, the Wave Swinger. Actually, That's the, a Moby Dick. These that was rides, a these, star I knew up in Alaska. <laughs> these rides look better than the ones we used to see on the ads in the 70s. However, however, they are still <laughs> bad enough that by today's standards... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. This is a cheesy <laughs> amusement park. By 1981 standards, they were quite modern. Here's one. Here's one. You're going to love the title of this one. Happy Swing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a the happy swing. <laughs> happy Come on swing. down. It's my safe place. It's the happy swing. Yeah, there's the... Don't worry about the world and the happy swing. There's it's, the Roto Whip. Prozac. These are all still cheesy. They really are. I the, can't believe it. The mini <laughs> train. The still standing. Yeah. The Jolly Caterpillar. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus. Oh, a, Lord. Kingsbury. I should have invested in the place when I had a chance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A dollar uh, a share. Oh, you, boy. I could have been rich. Go online. You can sign up for their newsletter. I'm there. I got to find out. I got to yeah. find out what's going on in the world of Kingsburg Amusement well, Park. Well, wait a minute. It's Keensburg. Keensburg. Well, no wonder. I, I imagine I that's. I, get, I used to remember it as Kingsburg. But I, I think it King may Grand have been Park. actually yeah, been Keensburg, but... and we didn't uh, remember it, you know. Yeah, uh, you say Wimbledon, I say Wimbledon. What's the difference? What you do? I wish there were, th they even have a Facebook page for the latest info. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Wow. Jeez Holy almighty. crap, that's like finding out my old day camp is still around. Uh, R.H. Uh, Ranch, uh, register your kids today. Leave them here for the summer. We don't give a shit. You can park all day on weekdays for $5. A lot of stuff. Oh. Look out, beware of the smash and Weekends grab. and holidays, seven dollars for parking. So they, they're Not even bad. they're even getting you for parking here. <laughs> uh, yeah. About the park. It doesn't say how much it costs to get into the park though. Wow. They might pay you. I don't know. Uh, Please come to Kingsbury uh, We need people. Uh, come come to Kingsbury. Uh, we need extras. Park founder William Gillhouse and his associates. Purchase some waterfront property and build a summer resort that was in 1904. Oof. So the, 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 the way back. If you want the full history of Keensburg Amusement Park, here it is. Well, uh, well we're in this deep. We might as well go all the way. Uh, let's see. Then uh, 1910, New Yorkers can come and can take 50-cent round-trip voyage from Battery Park to Keensburg's <laughs> newest boardwalk attractions. <laughs> Mystery Ride opens in 1931. I'd like to ask, what is the Mystery Ride? But they don't know. That's why it's a Mystery Ride. It's a mystery. There you go. Just answered your own question. Now, in 1995, the, the next generation, the grandsons, purchased the park. Here, it is. in 1996, a second park, 
Runaway Rapids Water Park was built. Jeez, they expanded. Yeah. Holy shit, I thought the place would be like condos by now. But that's 1995. But from 1931 to 1995, they were pretty much that cheap-ass thing we saw on television. <laughs> I know. They were like this great, oh, deep then they, amusement park. The they, commercials were like then it, a dollar fifty to make. Wait a minute. You're going to love this. It was completely destroyed in Superstorm Sandy. Ah. And there's this <laughs> picture... No keeping- Keeping them down, though. There's this picture of the rubble that reminds me very much of what the old park <laughs> looked like. Like Chris Christie kept the snack bar alone in business for years. Yes, exactly. So it's, uh, so, <laughs> Give me 58 hot dogs and 49 boxes of gaucho cookies. Well, where did you go when you were a kid? What, what, what When your parents said, oh, we're going to go to a certain <laughs> okay. place. We went to Rockaway's Playland, which was uh, kind of like the Kingsburg Amusement Park of Far Rockaway. And uh, there's a little song, Junkies, Robbers, Murderers, too. If you come, they'll get you, but they won't. If you don't, come to Rockaway's Playland. <laughs> and we'd all go and have fun. And you'd, like, knock over the milk bottles and win, win a dead rubber ball that wouldn't bounce. Fun. <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> that was my prize list. I put a rubber ball, I'd, I'd bounce on the ground, just stayed there. Go, oh, it's dead. Wow. So, uh, and then I, I made it to Palisades and Music Bar once in the, in the spring of 1969, which is probably right before it closed. Which, okay, you remember? Remember the Palisades Amusement Park? Yeah, we went for the gusto there. And, do, uh, do you remember the theme? Palisades. Do you remember the song for that? Oh, who cares? You hear, you hear, you're a non-American communist bastard if you don't know that song. Okay, sing Palisades it for Palisades has the rise, Palisades has the fun, come on over. I just, I you know what that is? That is just an upgrade from the Keensburg Amusement Park theme song. Yeah. It was written by like the, yeah, guy, guys, the guy's more successful <laughs> composer brother. You know? Yeah, they got they got the Kingsburg Amusement Park team. They gave it to Sammy Kahn for a little tune up. I think I can do a little something with that. And then they had the Palisades song. Let me add a major chord there and a sharp over there. Before you do it, you had to hit. Now, people don't know that. I mean, we have to mention this to people because a lot people all over the country don't know what we're talking about. But Palisades Amusement Park was in New Jersey on the other side of the Hudson. And you could actually see it if you went down the. Uh, the FD, uh, what was it called then? The uh, the the West Side Highway. Yeah, and um, they used to have a big kind of like floating, you know, one of those billboard kind of uh, light uh, things where you could read stuff they would put up there, like "Come out, we're having new free rides. We have the new this. We you know, there's that. Yeah, there's everything. this." Uh, and one night, I am driving down. I swear to you, this Palisades Amusement Park. I'm driving down the West Side Highway, going to work at WMCA, and I look over across at Palisades Amusement Park, and it says, "Listen tonight to Alex Bennett on WMCA." No, oh, that must have felt good. That was a that was a cheap thrill to see my name in yeah. lights across the river. You know, oh, sure. <laughs> apparently we okay. bought we bought they were that that sign was for sale and we bought some time on it so you know not bad they put my name up there so there you go you were palisades baby proud moment of my life i guess the other proud there you moment, go what was it the other proud moment was the night that i worked uh carnegie hall i played carnegie hall oh, because cool. because no because everybody there, but i've never been on the stage everybody used to talk about you know I'm playing Carnegie Hall. Well, good. How much are you paying for it? Because they didn't realize <laughs> that Carnegie that. Carnegie Hall was a for rental hall, and so anybody who oh, wanted yeah. anybody who wanted to use it could just buy a you know a, a day there yeah. or whatever it cost and and do your little concert. So when you there know you they go. had just have that old joke about how do you get to Carnegie? Pardon me, sir. How do I get to Carnegie Hall? And somebody says practice. You know, and uh, but he didn't have to practice. You could have no talent at all. Florence Foster Jenkins. <laughs> Florence Foster Jenkins. You know who she was. They made the movie about her recently. But she was uh-huh. this woman who was the worst singer in the world. Once a yeah, year right. would hold, uh, would, no, she held a big concert at Carnegie Hall because <laughs> she was a millionaire and she could afford to rent it. Wow, yeah. So have anyway, you can have the show. I was there because Marvel Comics was doing a Marvel Comics evening at Carnegie Hall. And uh-huh. uh, Stan Lee asked me to come and play the part of, I believe it was Dr. Doom. 
and we all stand, stood on stage, a lot of personalities and stuff from New York City, and we and we read parts of the comics. Oh, cool! To the audience, <laughs> a comic recital. Yeah, so yeah. I, I got a big thrill. I called my mother from backstage, and I said, "Mom, guess where I am?" She says, "Where?" I says, "Tonight, I'm playing Carnegie Hall," <laughs> and she <laughs> she was so thrilled, you know, because <laughs> Carnegie Hall had that that. What do you call it? Uh, that reputation, you know. Oh, sure. I my son Carnegie played. Hall. There you go. My, my, played, it, my son played Carnegie Hall. Oh, what did he play? <laughs> Doctor Doom, you know. So. <laughs> Oh, a, I told my mother I was playing Carnegie Hall. She said, what about the other 365 nights? Hey, relax, man. By the way, to show you that you can find anything on the Internet now, because people save everything and now they put it on the Internet, uh, somebody sent me a picture of the front of Carnegie Hall that night with the poster for the show. Oh, really? Wow, yeah. everything's the, find anything on the Internet. It's yeah. Insane. Oh, yeah. It's uh, all there. Somebody, remember, remember I did this, you probably don't remember this in New York, but I, I did this thing where I, you know, said, is Paul McCartney dead? You know, we did this. I remember 1969. <clears throat> of course I remember that. I well, got a little booklet with clues proving he was dead. <laughs> I got them. <laughs> get, guess what? The other day, somebody sends me a link to 15 minutes of my show about Paul McCartney being dead. Uh, amazing. Amazing what they have. It's so, amazing. you know, um, uh, there are things in my uh, – I keep looking for stuff because – uh, uh, there are certain things I wish would come back up. I've mentioned this before. There was a show I did with the National Lampoon that was very terrific, uh, right. and there was well, there was what there was another show we, that I that I wanted to go find. But eventually, somebody will send me a link because kids are out there recording these shows every night on their little woolen sack right. at three and three quarters right. inches per second. And uh, uh -huh. now, hey, I just remember <laughs> I have this tape of Alex Bennett. Boom! Let's put it up on the internet. So, you know, I find stuff up there all the time. You know, thank you, folks. Insane, You've completed my yeah. vaults here, you know. But there's still... Oh, it's insane. I went on Facebook. I was looking for a copy of my my nursery school picture from 1960. And within 24 hours, there it was. There was another young lady who was in my nursery school class, lives in Florida now, who had a copy. Bam. There I go, whoa. Is there anything this thing can't do? Yeah. Well, it, you know what it can't do? It can't keep you safe from predators. So, uh, you know. That's true. That's true, Dr. Nasser. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh. There's always somebody yeah, There's always somebody trying to steal your identity these days. And in the normal yeah. words of Larry Bubbles Brown, go ahead, steal, go. steal my identity. Uh, you can have no life like me. There you, you know. go. <laughs> you have no life. Yeah, sure. Take mine. Yeah. You're welcome to the fourteen dollars and six cents I have. <laughs> I asked this. <laughs> the, I, of the Confederacy. I asked this uh, on the show uh, to our citizen panel, and that was, "Are you afraid of uh, of uh, you know identity theft?" And uh -huh. a couple of them went, "Oh yes, absolutely. I'm afraid of it." I don't give a shit. I really don't. Go I, ahead, steal me. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm not worth taking, and if they did, I've had uh, my bank account hacked into and money taken out a couple of times, but they fixed that quick. So, you know, I, I, I look at that, I see that stuff immediately, and I report it. It's happened twice to me, and they fixed it. So I don't worry. I don't think about it. You know, if I was a multi-billionaire or something, it was, they maybe, but uh, no, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing to steal here, folks. Move along. Yeah, well, I mean, I just think that if you, if you try and hide it and you try to protect yourself, and, you know, there are people willing to charge you a fortune to protect you. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, we are um, anti steel. Sign with us. No one will know you. I think people are going to go after you harder than if you just don't give a shit. <laughs> you know? And yeah, just I know. Go, okay, go, I, go, I don't go, give a go, shit. Go ahead. Take, take, take what? Take my face. Steal my identity. identity. What? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna cheat me out of a, uh, out of a tax uh, refund this year? Forget it. I'm not yeah. getting a tax <laughs> refund this year. I didn't make there you it. There go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, Let them take it. Take it. Take it all. Yeah. Let me be someone else. Yeah. I'm actually getting very frustrated by the internet, to tell you the truth. I mean, you remember you remember me. Who was Mr. Technology when you were Oh, you, man. You know, I remember the big laser discs parties of 8 or 83. <laughs> I remember. I remember. This is this is how how much I was a, a geek back then. I was the first one that I know of to use a computer in a control room in a radio station. You remember I used to have a uh, computer there. Well, I did for yeah. a while, but then the bosses said to me, don't bring that computer into the studio. 
It distracts okay, you. Don't don't Stop it. Yeah, don't do that. It's too distracting. And I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the future. I, and I, what I was doing is I was having people who also had computers write me like texts and emails and things like that, and I would read them on the air. Yeah. And I, yeah. you know, I, I, they, they would, they did not like the fact that I, you know, that I was using they, a computer. They, they weren't looking ahead, those punks. They didn't see the big picture. In fact, we actually didn't do a video exactly of the radio show, but we did a thing where we uh, shot a picture about every thirty seconds, and you could see it on your on your computer at home. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, early, we did a lot uh, of that stuff. Early YouTube. Yeah. So, but now it's just like you know. I mean, hell, every night I do my show live on YouTube. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, nobody watches, but I do my show live on YouTube. And uh, I was doing it on Facebook live, but I don't. When you're on, I show your picture, you know, because I don't. I don't have <laughs> video on. Mouth and like got a little mouth are going through it, like well, I'm really well, there or something. You don't well, blink. What's the matter? Yeah, well, because you uh, you've never you've never gotten into like Skype and things like that, right? I think I did a Skype interview on this thing a couple of years ago with some people on Long Island. <laughs> I couldn't find the uh, the app again, so I mean, it was there and then it wasn't there. But uh, no, I'm just like I don't know nothing about this stuff. I I once tried to get on. I once tried to send an email and I accidentally started a war with Malta. I'm well, see, I'm talking to you on the phone, but you do have a computer, right? Oh, of course, yes. So we have a we have a desktop which is in, in the best shape right now, and I do most of my stuff on this phone here. I get Facebook on it, and I do this on it, and I get YouTube on it, and blah blah blah. So yeah. everything is pretty much done on this little bitty phone here. And what kind of what kind of internet connection do you have? Uh, what do I have? I, mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just know I'm on it. So my wife takes care of the whole thing. And, and so do you have just, a? I do you, know we're on. Yeah. And do you have a? I see. Do you have a camera? Yeah, there's a camera. Well, maybe we, I got a regular camera. Well, we could figure that. Maybe I could call you next week or something. We could figure this out. Maybe next time we do this, we could show your your face. Oh, great! I'll have to wear clothes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I well, you ha- yeah, yeah, you have to wear clothes. Uh, no, but uh, you know, you're not like Bubbles. I mean, Bubbles is purely impossible. There's no, no way. There's no way that I, he's got one of those clam tops with a rotary thing. He <laughs> still <laughs> has. <laughs> he still has a flip phone. You ready for that? No, he still has still a flip phone. Connection. He has a dial-up connection. Uh, he, he does. A cylinder he, recorder at he does have a computer, but I think the video that he downloaded is just coming in from 1963. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's just <laughs> here's President Kennedy's speech he's making in Dallas. This looks like a good day. I mean, even somebody like you, who is not really a big computer guy, you've got some kind oh, of no, high. You got a, some kind of high speed internet in your in your home. Yeah, I'm in contact with the world. You know, <laughs> I can I know the basics. Well, so what I'll do is I'll me. we'll figure out a time and I'll call you and we'll see if we can if we could get your Skype up and running. If not, we Here's can. There's a way ha- to do it. Uh, I did it before, so you, wait, to do it. you can also download a new Skype if you don't have it. But you know, what okay, can, you know, I'll forget that. Yeah, but we, because I, 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 it's it's always better when people can see the people I'm talking to. It's always more interesting for them. Uh, That's true. Plus, you know, I want to see how old you've gotten. You know? Oh, <laughs> you could go on Facebook and see pictures of me. But, I, I uh, saw a picture. Actually, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I'm getting, I'm getting, I haven't gotten my crown put in yet. That's March 1st, and then, then I'll go public. Yeah, oh, until then, don't look at me, I'm hideous. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, I saw a picture on the internet the other day of our old friend Steve Kravitz, who's a comedian, folks, and uh-huh. he's getting to look like, uh, Al, he's getting to look like John Turturro. <laughs> <laughs> am I right Which or am I wrong? Like, yeah. Rizzo with the home or something. So unless I go on <laughs> online, I don't I don't see these people as they are. And sometimes some of these people are actually put up photographs that are like years old, right? Oh, sure. I think it's from 1980. Then you see him and he looks like Burt Mustin. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Burt Mustin. <laughs> wait a minute. In there, your picture, you look, you look there's a, there, there's, look a, you there's a reference I almost don't get. I just remember the name, <laughs> but I can't remember the face. That's the fireman. You know, oh, I'm man. the king of useless references, and I'll keep doing them till I die. At yeah. this point, I don't care anymore. So you working anywhere? 
no. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting on a gig at the Frogmore Theater. Hopefully, uh, Lucy, Lucy wants to host the show there, and I'll let you know when that is, if that is, and uh, if I'm yeah. still breathing. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, uh, we're we're running out of time here, and uh, we'll, okay. we'll do this again in a couple of weeks. Does that seem uh, appropriate to you? Okay, yes. ladies and gentlemen, fine. let's all thank the wonderful Stephen Pearl for having joined us. Thank today. you very much. Thank you. I love each and every one of you. I will visit you all soon. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, hi, everybody. It's me. It's old Alex. Yeah, you wanted to go and come to see me on video, and you wanted to see how old I've gotten. I'm an old fart. No, I, uh, uh, um, I looked at myself the other day, and I decided that I probably shouldn't run video on me, that it probably scares small children and dogs. Uh, <laughs> I have not gracefully uh, grown old. But anyway, I'm, you know, you can't, probably can't see it yet. I'm actually growing a full beard. Why? Because girlfriend doesn't like them. That's why I did it. That's why I did it. Anyway, let me see here. Let me get up uh, Skype here so that I can have people call me. This is a thing we do. In case you've never watched the show before, it's called the Citizens Panel. And it, uh, people call us on Skype, and then we put them on screen, and then you can see who they are. And it's really, uh, 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 sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's terrific, and sometimes uh, you just want to watch paint dry, be more interesting. But, uh, hey, you never know what you're going to get and what kind of discussion you're going to get. All I know is that I'm here to tell you that I'm several thousand dollars poorer than I was the last time I talked to you. Uh, boy, how about that stock market, huh? How about it? How about, you know, Trump has been taking credit for the rise in the stock market, so I certainly hope he's going to uh, uh, be, uh, be uh, in there uh, 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 saying how sad he is that he is fucked up and that the economy is going to shit, you know, but he won't. He won't. He'll be, do you know, this is true, that Sean Hannity, that motherfucker Sean Hannity, um, blamed Obama for the stock crash during the last couple of days. Blamed him. Okay? So I, and I, I, I listened to it, and I got to tell you, I couldn't tell you the logic behind it right now. It was just so wrong. It was so out of whack. I mean, you know, the trouble with uh, Sean Hannity is he's so fucking predictable. But anyway, we're sitting here, we're waiting for people to call. And if you don't know how to call us, you can call using Skype. And if you over, go over to gabnet.net and you won't have to miss the video on the program because the video of the program is at gabnet.net as well. You simply go over there and look over on the right-hand side of the page. It'll tell you how to get Skype, how to uh, uh, get online, how to call us, a number to call us, uh, you know, things like that. So uh, uh, do that. And what we're doing is we're waiting for people to call us. Uh, we want to hear from them uh, so that we can uh, uh, talk to them on our little program here. Um, and uh, I don't know who's going to be the first to call tonight. This is uh, already getting scary. And last Monday was dead as a doornail. Wednesday was even deader than a doornail. I don't know if you can be deader than a doornail. And then all of a sudden on Thursday, full house. Friday, full house. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Probably people are too poor to call now because they had all their money in their 401k and they just went and looked at it and then uh, somebody had to take the gun out of their hand from shooting themselves. Anyway, uh, our Skype number, in case you don't know it, is uh, Gabnet Live. That's our ID. That's the number you, that's what you call in order to get a hold of us. On the other hand, on the other hand, you go over to um, gabnet.net. There's a little button that, there that says uh, call, and then there's a Skype logo next to it. And you do that, and you're good to go. You just, you just call us, and we'll get the video. 
first guy up, ladies and gentlemen. My beard is starting to come along a little bit, but not, not like yours, Jeff. You got the world's greatest beard. Um, uh, or or uh, I'd say the world's greatest beard. Did I just blow myself off? No, no, did. no, you're on. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. You, you can hear yeah. me? Okay, no, you're fine. Yeah, but I can't. But if you can blow you. I can't you... see you long enough. What do you mean you can't see me long enough? I think a little small. Yeah. You say I get to see the, your whole face. Oh, and you can't see my whole face? Oh, wait a minute. Let me look. Um, let me look I'm at. I'm shrink. Shrinking. <laughs> There we go. Here comes here, here comes Scott. Scott, uh, do I do I look okay? It looks good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Scott, hello, Scott. There's Scott. Can, do I look okay? Scott. Scott looks fine. No, uh, no. I don't. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Scott? Oh, is it, can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You were a little intermittent there, buddy. So were you. Yeah. Are you there? Are you? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me, Scott? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. This is... we, we just had a power outage here for the last half hour, so I had no power, so I don't know if my internet, my router, and everything are working right and everything. Yeah. It, was, it, was a, right. it was a... Like you're in the dark ages again, yeah. man. Yeah. Mm. By the way, here's Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. <clears throat> what, is the shirt, what is that shirt you're wearing? Oh, that's uh, Captain uh, America. No. Oh, okay. All right. It's a gift from Tony. Oh, jeez. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> Get the and, dog and you, on and the and back. You're, and you're, and you're, uh, you're wearing it to give that credibility? Uh, no, I just wanted to wear a comfortable T-shirt and... Uh, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, the ones the that have the ones uh, that have that uniform, the plaid. Uh, yeah, yeah, the plaid pants. Well, mine, mine are. Uh, what have I got tonight here? I got the yeah. You say, same pair. You know, it's it's the uniform of Gabnet. So uh, well, you know. Well, what, what kind of pants are you wearing, Jeff? I have cords. You, oh, you actually have corduroy. You're actually wearing yeah. wearing very collegiate. I'm so. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Do you have one of those jackets on. with the leather pads on the uh, elbows? No. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> and the, the pipe. <laughs> the pipes are nice. Pipes are good. Yeah. 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 So anyway, oh, um, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, uh, where? What happened to Scott? He suddenly he disappeared. He went to get his pants. <laughs> no. Now we just lost. <laughs> we just lost Scott. Yeah. Yeah, who knows what happened? What hey, Scott? Jeez, come back, Scott. Anyway, uh, I'm through begging. I'm not begging. I've given up begging. Why well, you still looking for uh, subscribers? Yeah, I, I'm just I'm 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 just not begging anymore. Get one of those signs. Sit, stand on the freeway entrance and said, "Say, uh, please subscribe for money." <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we'll do radio for a subscription. Well, we got, we got almost, uh, I, I let's see here. I don't know where we are right now, but I think we're maybe, we got about 80 in the last week. So I'm yeah. on my way to, to 1,000, but somebody said, well, why don't you go and buy your Facebook subscribers? Well, and I feel that would be, see, I don't find that a problem with Twitter because Twitter doesn't pay me money if I've got lots of subscribers, but YouTube gives me a different status if I do, and I think it would kind of be dishonest of me to do that. I don't, I don't know that you can. Yes, you can. You, you can buy subscribers. Well, I went you... on, I looked at it. There's somebody who'll do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how they do it. And they say they're all real subscribers. That these are people who, who, when you send out something, they will receive it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, I imagine that uh, it might cost more uh, to get those subscribers than it would be worth because if they don't watch your content, then no, you're not they, getting any ad But money. they claim they're really, no, they claim, that, well, no, believe me, if they're not watching, that, that's what you get the money for. You don't get the right. money for yeah, subscribers. If watching, you don't get any money. All, all you get is if I hit 1,000 subscribers, there are a little, few little perks I get, you know, so... 
you know, yeah, whatever. So, well, how many people were there on Friday? Fr it looked pretty crowded. Friday, we had a lot of people watching. We hit like uh, we hit we hit one of our all time highs on that. Yeah. So you know, it, and that's people watching at one time. Tonight, it's it's okay. It's better than it was when it was over on Facebook. That's for damn sure. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch at all that little video I sent you of my friend uh, uh, and uh, describing his um, uh, his new computer on YouTube? No. Oh. Oh. Well, you know, uh, he's got. Uh, I watched YouTube a channel. I watched a little bit of it, and I I really don't care about that. You know. Well, he no, it's it wasn't the point. Uh, the point was he has all sorts of different kind of content. He's got a YouTube channel with twenty thousand followers just for his in search of the best seafood uh, in the world. So he goes all over the world, and when he's uh, anywhere, like this weekend he was in Boston, uh, he was uh, he, he did a video while he's sitting there eating the seafood, and, and there's uh, almost 20,000 followers just on his seafood channel. And, and, how, long, and how, how long is it? How long is each uh, show? Uh, the meal. <laughs> Basically, so, so it goes on for a half hour, forty-five minutes. Uh, maybe not that long. He speeds through some things, and uh, and uh, you know makes his comments and uh, shows the thing off and gives his rating. Uh, you know, and uh, so anyway, that's just one example of content. And he has a number of different channels that he's building. And uh, uh, he hadn't. Uh, he apologized in this last one because he hadn't done one for about three months, but. Uh, that's, uh, you know, the kinds of things he's doing. And on his uh, photo thing, he's got over 550,000 subscribers. Hmm. But he's been doing that for about five years, six yeah. years. I don't believe those numbers, but I'll, I'll, I'll accept no, these, these are legit numbers. I mean, he was able to move here from Sydney uh, and, uh, you know, set up all his stuff and do do his things. He's he's making some money out of that. And then plus he has links to Adorama, B and H, and other you know when people buy and they buy through his associate link, he gets a small commission. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, good for him. You know. Yeah. I'm not, nice to hear somebody's doing well. Yeah. Well, if uh, if you wouldn't embarrass me, I'll I'll ask him if he wants to uh, come no, on and I talk don't, about. Nah. Nah. No? Nah, nah, oh. nah. He doesn't need the plug. Well, no, he doesn't need it. You well, know. it's not. It's not. I don't think it's going to be very interesting to the general audience out mm -hmm. there. No, all right. I'm sure he wouldn't even put somebody on doing that. No, no, it would just be a conversation. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm going to uh, probably. Uh, I. I know what I should do. Probably start a channel, but start a series on the best places to take a dump in public toilets. Did you, did you see that Denver today passed a law that it's legal now to uh, for humans to dump on the sidewalk, urinate on the sidewalk, uh, and uh, and so forth? Well, there used wanna, to be a fine. Look, they want to be like New York. Everybody wants to be <laughs> like New York. <laughs> you know, but you can't just be like New York by having people dump on the, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's legal to defecate and urinate on Denver sidewalks. Thank uh, you. So they just decriminalized public defecation. Uh, uh, and, uh, and <laughs> Another reason to move to Colorado. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you, first of all, you've got the dope, right? You got the dope. Yeah. You got the yep. ganja. And then you got, uh, you got uh, the, the ability to take a shit anywhere you want to. <laughs> But you have to pick it up afterward. No, your dog has to you pick it up. Uh, your dog you has, you have to have a trained dog <laughs> to pick it up. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? You know, you know what, you know what really bothers me? What is that clicking sound? Is that happening at your place, Jeff? That tapping? Oh, there's a little clicking over there. What is it? My wife is cooking something. Oh, I see. We always hear her cooking. That's okay. She's always she's there. working. She's chopping uh, stuff up. You know, with the sound of that chop, it sounds a little like Jeffrey Dahmer's house. Yeah, right. I hope not. <laughs> what kind of snacks is she making exactly? Fingertips? Uh, you know. Um, but, uh, oh, it's some kind of vegetable thing. You know what I made this weekend? Go ahead. Uh, 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 a beef bourguignon. Ah. 
And I still did. have some of it. It's ve it was very good. And you know what's great about it? You make it. You eat it. It tastes good. Okay. You warm it up the next day. It's better. It's better. So my new thing is I'm going to make the beef bourguignon. I'm going to then put it in the refrigerator, and then I'm going to heat it up before I serve it to people because it, it somehow when you do it that way, it tastes better the next day. It's just like pizza. In the next morning cold, it, it's yes. always better than it was that night. And here's what I did, too. I did it in a crock pot. And what I did was I made up made up the whole thing the night before and just put it in the refrigerator and then about 10 o'clock in the morning turned on the crock pot and let it sit there for eight hours and voila, Bennett beef bourguignon. So. Very French. Well, not the Bennett part. Huh? No, when you say voila. That's the triple beef. <laughs> yeah. So that, I, I did that. I, I You know, it actually turns out i do most of the cooking in the house now um you know and then today now here here is something that happened else today um i do the same thing. You, you do it too you do most of the cooking then how yes. come she's chopping right now and by the way you know it is a quarter of 11 at night is she's just Wait working on dinner it no nah, this is for um uh, what is this for a soup kitchen a soup Oh well, Kitchen. then we feel like we're we're helping then. Yeah. Right. She's very liberal, you know. She's got all these things. Yeah, she's got to do. Yeah, but anyway, so um, um, uh, the uh, other thing that happened is girlfriend decided we had these side tables uh, in the bedroom, and they were getting pretty damn ratty. Uh, I bought them fifteen years ago when I first moved into my apartment downtown, and. Uh, Maybe not 15 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, something like that. Anyway, it was cheap, cheap ass furniture, and the top was getting bad, and so on. So she finally decided, I'm going to get us new end tables. So she went out and bought these beautiful end tables. What did she say they're called? They're called, they're, they're kind of bulge, kind of a bulgy oh, look. French, uh, 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 the, uh, Louis the 15th? No, uh, no, French. no, no, no. It's, it's called something like, I don't know. Viking or something. I don't know. But anyway. Oh, Empire. No. No? No, no. And Empire. don't stop guessing. Otherwise, you're just going to be guessing all night. And, well, you know. take the camera in there and show us what the tables look She's like. She's sleeping. She Well, then be oh. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. It teased us on these tables. Like that? Huh? No, what it does is it kind of like goes, it kind of goes in like this, you know. It, on the sides, it kind of has that look. Minding women again, and then it, it has a it has a stencil thing on the front. It's very nice. Anyway, so she buys it. So she makes a bet with me. She has hired somebody to come out Thursday and put the thing together because it says assembly required. And she says to me, "But I just don't know. I, I, if it's just the feet, that we could do." And I said, yeah, that we could do. She said, I said, but I don't think it's the feet. Would they say assembly required if all you had to do was put the feet on it? Look at you the know. instructions. And she says, no, I bet that's all it is. And I said, I think they're not going to send a big thing put together. I think it's going to come in flat pieces so that they can ship it flat, right? Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she says, I'll bet you. And I said, how much? $10. Okay. And then I thought about it, and I said, let's up it to 20 because there's no way they're shipping these things as the, as the box itself, right? So you lost in the stock market, and you lost the Marjorie. I lost the bet to Marjorie. It comes. Wait and, and wait a minute. So I take it out of the box, which is not easy because they're really in there. They did a good job of packing it. And I get them out. And I just turn it over and zip, 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 zip. I put on the fee. And, you know, so now she's got to call up and get these people who are going to come over and assemble this thing and tell them not to come. And after it's over, I said, well, here's your $20. By the way, how much were they going to charge you to put those things together? And she said, $80 a side table. Oh. I said, 
eighty dollars to turn the thing upside down and put these feet on it? She says, Yeah. I said, I just saved you 160 bucks and you're taking my 20. She says, I want it fair and square. <laughs> I said, I should send you a bill for 40 and you'll be getting off cheap. Yeah. You know? I'm surprised you, you, you made that bet. Well, I mean, I, I didn't think, you know, I'm used to stuff coming like that and you have to put it together, you know? You know who died is the guy that invented that. Or just left. The guy who owned and started IKEA, uh, his whole thing was flat pack furniture. Yeah, yeah. He was ninety or ninety one, uh, and uh, yeah, he uh, he just died. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, and yeah, I didn't he, know he, that he, IKEA. He, he didn't just was, die. He died about two or three weeks ago. Yeah, and that, that IKEA was named uh, the his his initials and the town that he comes from uh, is how he came up with the name IKEA. No, well, really? That's very exciting. Oh, yeah. Well, it's an I, exciting it fact. I don't think that'll ever show up on Jeopardy. Okay? Oh, so. If it ever does, you got the answer. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, but uh, it, it, uh, I thought Ikea meant sucko furniture. Kind of. You yeah. know, the desk that I'm using uh, in the computer room, Ikea. The thing in the back uh, with the cubby holes, Ikea. Uh, they they make some interesting stuff and uh, and it's cheap and it's it's not bad. Yeah, it, it, you know it's amazing how it just falls apart on its own. It just disappears. You, you cannot but... move it and you cannot disassemble it and reassemble it. Why? Uh, if you do that, it's over. But uh, you know it was uh, easy enough for this. Why room. did you try that once? Yes, and oh, I've had why, customers. Why, why that can't have you? Wanted... Why can't you reassemble it? Uh, they fall apart. The, the particle board that they're uh, made out of uh, just can't uh, take the stress of having the screw oh, really? come in and out. Because I had a whole bookcase and everything I had to take apart when we moved in here, and I put it back together. You know, I figured out how to do it. Well, you were lucky. You know, bookcase doesn't have that much stuff. But if, no, I said uh, it was a bookcase, and it was a, it was it had a bottom. The bookcases went on top. It had a bottom. It had drawers in it and everything. Uh, you know? And where is it now? It's in the guest room. Oh, oh, I thought you threw it away because it No, broke. no, it's in the guest room. It's perfect. It's been perfect. My friend uh, Steve, it was in his old apartment. He had it handmade by him for himself. And it's just basically it's very Well, if it's handmade, it wasn't made by IKEA. No, of course not. But oh, I had, well, but I had, about but I had to IKEA. figure out how to take it apart and put it back together again. Yeah, no, that's because you're brilliant, and you can also do plumbing. But, you know, uh, IKEA stuff is the th stuff that I said you can't put together. Well, what uh, makes you think I can do plumbing? Because you have a fixation about toilets. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, your plumbing isn't very good, but mine's I, fine. I, that's true. <laughs> but uh, didn't you, you know, you had four shows bragging about how you fix your toilet. So, you know, I just figured that you were the plumber's oh, friend. I didn't know. Wait a minute. When did I say I fixed the toilet? I can't remember uh, fixing the toilet. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, you, uh, anybody else remember that? Or that's a dangerous place to go. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm good at fixing. I'm, I'm good at creating uh, solutions to hefty problems. Like, for instance, when we moved in here, none of the closets had lights in them. Mm -hmm. So I put lights in them. Couple have already flashlights. No, what I got were these lights that sometimes you use outside. Mm -hmm. That when you open the door, the lights go on. And yeah. then I got the newer ones, which are even brighter. And so when you open up a door to our closets now, you can see everything inside. Well, you know, a lot of people do that. They buy those solar lights. They put them in the closet. They close the door. Well, is, wait a minute. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> then they wonder why they don't work. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, but no, this was a this was a pretty good deal all the way around. You know, I was very happy with it. So yeah, yeah. I like the ones that you clap your hands, you know, and they turn on. Well, what what happened was I I put in new ones that were brighter and bigger, and the yeah. other ones I just put sitting out. And what happened was I found that just letting them sit out. If I put one in like the bathroom, you go in there at night, the light this the light goes on. You know, you don't have to do anything about it. So then and we're using them elsewhere now, too. Yeah. But, uh, 
I feel so. like I have to go to the bathroom. Well, if I do, you'll have to talk amongst yourselves. Where is everybody tonight? See, again, it's another night. We get to the end of the week, and everybody's calling like crazy. I don't understand it. Doesn't make sense oh. to me. Renee's out there. Phil is talking about particle board furniture. <laughs> yeah. All right. Some hey, tomorrow is going to be uh, Phil Free and Soul Friday. It's a right. uh, it's a double photography club me uh, week. Uh, really? Well, yeah. if, uh, if it's like last uh, Wednesday, I'll have two people here. Oh, I hope not. Be sure you call tomorrow night, Scott. I'm going to need people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll see. We'll, oh, uh, we'll see. Hope you get a full house. That's why I'm not talking much old. anyway. What good am I going to do? Huh? Get a word in edgewise with Phil around anyway. Well, I'm know. not going to be here tomorrow or Friday. So this, well, this... I, I won't have anything to say then. Well, let's well, go. Let's, let's go. Talk about the spaceship let's, going up. Let's go. Oh, 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 I, I want to talk about that, by the way. Yeah. Later? Okay. I, awesome. I anyway. was fucking blown away. Oh, yeah. And you see when the rockets came down? That's the part. Oh, it, that was amazing. That, it was like the rocket took off, and I went, amazing, wonderful. You know, he got that rocket up there. But the car is not. It's the nose cone is the car. Really? Yes. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was just sitting in there. No. It's exposed no, no. to space. No. Yes. It's space now. But from yeah. burning up. No, because going up, you don't it burn covered. up. It was in a, it, they called it a flange or something. Yeah, and then it opens up. It, it opens up, and there's the car sticking out there. with. And they put a dummy in the driver's seat. And wow. they're playing David Bowie's Space Oddity. And uh, uh, Rocket Man, wasn't it? No, Space no. Oddity. I don't know. Major, uh, yeah. Space, yeah, okay. uh, Rocket Man would have been Kim Jong Un. No, the Rocket Man would have been Elton John. Elton John. Sorry, yeah. you're right. right. Uh, but but uh, did you know that that is a real Tesla, Alex? Yes, yeah. it's a real Tesla. It's in fact, it's it, his it, it personal. Uh, it's his. Just, it's his personal Tesla. Well, yeah. What do you think the resale value is going to be on that? <laughs> when it gets back, not much. I have but, a lot of miles. <laughs> I have a lot of miles. Anyway, so, you know, and you know, the brilliance of Elon Musk is that not only did he do a amazing space yeah. achievement, but he managed to plug Tesla at the same time. Oh, yeah. But oh, anyway, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and God bless him. Go ahead. Put you know, patches on the side of the rocket. I don't care. Here's the best part. After they yeah. do this, I'm not expecting much. It took off. I went, woo. They went, okay, there now the, the, the uh, booster engines are, are, are separating from the rocket. And I'm going, okay, well, that's good. They'll go out to the ocean. They'll pick them up, right? Like, like NASA used to do. No, these fucking things turned around, came down, and landed within, I guess, a feet in unison. of each other. They, in, in, it in looked unison. like it was in unison. It they was. both landed almost at the exact same moment. Yeah. It kind of looked like it kind of looked like a North Korean rocket launch in reverse. <laughs> is what it looked like. But yeah. amazing. <laughs> that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. That was the frosting on the fucking cake, and yeah. I said, NASA, eat Musk's dust. Hey, do you, you think uh, Kim Jong Un was going to buy a Tesla? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but I mean, uh, what an achievement! What a fucking achievement! You know, I mean, and I hope that asshole Trump isn't going to take credit for it, saying, "Well, you see, individual initiative, uh, uh, companies." Blah, blah, blah. He should. He should. No, he had nothing to do with. It. Believe me, this thing was in the planning for years uh, now. Uh, Trump. Trump told uh, you know Musk about this years ago. Yeah, and Musk pretty much told him to go fuck himself. If you yeah, may remember, yeah. recently j left his uh, his little advisory committee because uh, yeah. he couldn't. Not until, yeah. not until he stole Trump's idea about the uh, rocket with the Tesla in it. Yeah, yeah, right, right. He says, "Get get out of here and go to the moon." Well, yeah. he did. <laughs> so, Melania w Melania wishes she had been launched. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but that, I was going to say one thing, Alex, before you go on. This is one step closer to man on Mars. 
Mars. Yeah, well, this, you know where the where the Tesla is going. It's going to Mars. He it's, doesn't even know. No, it's going around the sun, I think, first, and then it's going to Mars. Wow. I, I saw his interview after he, the launch he was on, and he's, he says it's just going to keep going. He said the battery's only going to last like 12 hours in, in on the ship, and th then it, they're going to lose the video feed and everything. So, But, yeah, I don't know. I thought I heard it was going to go to Mars, too, but, but I don't know for sure. You know, Mars is the next planet over. Uh, you know, all they had to do was shoot it up, hit the planet, and they would have been fine. They're going around the sun. That's just so that they could charge extra. You know, you're hey, saying, you're yeah. saying, hello, Bobby Berth, how are you? Not too bad. Yeah, did you see the launch today? Yeah, and uh, if my memory serves me correct, he's planning on taking two tourists around the moon later this year. I don't think he's going to do that, if you want my opinion. I mean, that's still too risky. You know. Well, that's what they're saying. Well, he, he had a ship that uh, blew up uh, re, uh, last year, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. One of his rockets. Well, yeah. no, they've been they've been blowing up the ones trying to come back and land. But, uh, it, but no, I thought this one would blow up on takeoff. No. Yeah, he did have one that blew up going takeoff. Also, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, oh, yeah. I, I think it he, happens. I think he's got these. I think he's got this thing worked out. I mean, that was the most perfect launch you could possibly imagine between the takeoff, which was perfect, and the separation of the of the booster rockets, and then the fact that as a kind of a ta-da moment, the two booster rockets coming down and landing on the on their own little launch pad or uh, unlaunch uh, pad. I don't know what you call it. Let's see the way around. Just letters to distinguish between the different tesla models you think he's going to call the next one the mars and uh you know and 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 other uh planetary uh, who, who knows things? but all i gotta say is elon musk is my hero okay he's yeah. pretty cool he's planning an uh, an even bigger rocket too well this yeah. is the biggest rocket that's ever been launched the most powerful rocket that's ever been launched no, uh, the Saturn V was no, still bigger. No, no, they say this was bigger than the Saturn V. That's what they were saying today hmm. in thrust. It's smaller, but it, you don't have to have them as big as they used to be. I thought Apollo 13 had more bang for the money. No, no, that, that was because the rockets looked bigger. They had to be bigger. But this thing supposedly, the, what they oh, were saying, the Columbia. The this, Columbia this was the most bang. powerful rocket ever, ever uh, uh what was yes. the one that blew up? Was it the Columbia? Yeah, yeah, the Challenger. Challenger. The Challenger. Okay, yeah, that, that one had more bang for the buck. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, boom. People died in that, Phil. I know. It's been a long time. No, uh, uh, the time has not run out on jokes about Challenger. Uh, in fact, there was a joke the next day after Challenger blew up. Yeah, what was that? It was going around Gilbert. the country. Well, you know what happens is there's... A thing called, I call folk jokes, you know, in which there's some, all of a sudden the next day you hear everybody telling the same joke about some event. And I've often tried to figure out where the joke starts. And somebody said Wall Street. I don't know why. It's just that they talk to people all over the country. But anyway, the joke was, you know what caused the uh, Challenger to blow up? Uh, Freebasing. Yeah. Uh. Well, maybe back then that made sense. That that was a funny joke back then, but you know, how, did you see it today, Patrick? Did you see the rockets take off and the ones land? No, I had no interest whatsoever. Oh, come on, Patrick! This was a really great moment. No, what what happened was, I was thinking back to both the Challenger and the Columbia that blew up in two thousand three, mm -hmm. and I just don't. I don't have the interest. I, I tried, and I just, I, I don't know. It, after watching two shuttles blow up, it. Now I'll, I'll let somebody else have the. Excitement. But you know, you know what? Why well, this was exciting? It was exciting because we saw something that was the next era of us leaving this planet, of leaving our cradle, so to speak, and somebody doing it in a very profound way. You know, NASA's all but given up, you know, 
But, uh, you know, they're launching some probes to other planets and things like that. But this is a guy who's actually going to land people somewhere else. And I, I think it's, I don't think he's going to do it within his lifetime. But oh, uh, yeah, you will. You, you think he's going to get to Mars in our lifetime? In your lifetime. In my life, I don't think so. I doubt it seriously because I'm planning on it's killing myself. I'm, th I'm planning on killing myself here, tomorrow. You're going to have to live a little bit longer. Yeah, uh, oh, I see. Now, now, within the next 20 years, they've estimated Mars. Well, do you think I got 20 years left? Yeah, you're never going to die. You're too mean. What? what? <laughs> How how is being mean a benefit to staying alive? You stay away from you gotta people. You got to you torment your people. wife. I see. I have to be around to torment my wife. You're right. You're right. Boy, I hope I can make it through the hour without having to run off to the bathroom. But if I can't, I'll just let you guys do the show by yourself while I do a quickie. Because uh, my stomach's acting up. Today. Quickie. I, I swore I wasn't going to talk about my health ever again. We were going to talk about Phil's health, about <laughs> Patrick's health. You don't have it. You don't seem to have any health problems, Scott. I just don't talk about it. Uh, are you a healthy guy? Here comes Tim. Tim. Hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. Good evening. Yes. Did you see the rocket today? Yeah, and I, I graduated in 1969, and I remember that summer watching the shuttles and everything. It, it was pretty impressive. But this thing, I think, was... I've seen a lot of impressive things in the space program because I've always been a kid who was in love with the space program. But this is maybe the most profound thing I've ever seen. I think that this there, was there's so, truly there's so, great. There's so much science and engineering that goes into it. It's amazing. Well, the, well this one... What it what what is amazing is, I think the simplicity is what kind of overwhelmed me. It's like shooting a bullet out of a, a revolver and having it boomerang back and go back into the barrel. Yes, basically. Yes, which means who, it's a really would, it's which, magic. which means it's a really bad gun. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but you, what I'm waiting to watch is. The, end, the uh, tornado that uh, Putin's going to put a nuclear warhead on because you can't track torpedoes mm -hmm. and it could contaminate half of the West Coast. Wow. Yeah. You, can't, you, can't, uh, you can only track things under the water if they're nearby because sonar mm -hmm. only goes so far. You can't watch the skies. Who, why, didn't, why didn't nobody think of this years ago? What? Because maybe the new nuclear hit warheads were too big back then. What do you mean? But they're wait, small but, enough wait, wait, now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You've changed the whole discussion. What are you talking about here? Uh, Putin is developing a torpedo, and uh, he's going to put a nuclear warhead on it. It wouldn't necessarily blow up San Francisco, but it would blow up some of it but contaminate the whole area for God, years. you know, you're talking about something so awe-inspiring a moment ago and you had to be the no, no, bummer just, uh, you had well, to be I'm the bummer you no but you're, you're giving us a negative on something today that was a real positive in my opinion patrick well, doesn't I, agree I know. but patrick has I, his own we got to watch both ends uh, what is bad what is bad about what happened today no no i was pointing out we have Technology they can do it was great. What happened today was great. Boy, you you sure, also, you sure harshed I'm, my. I'm watching. Technology can be used for bad. Too, you you like sure that. harshed my mellow. You know, you took. Well, a, I want to I want to be here long enough to see somebody go to Mars. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, you know. so, but but the, the, the technology is advancing so fast now. It's not arithmetic. It's algebraic. So quick, and we're going to have robots doing everything. You know, my kids, I got a three-year-old who never drive a car. Well, you know, I mean, the thing is that, te that uh, Elon Musk may be worth several billion dollars. I don't know what his worth is these days. Uh, but he may be worth many billions of dollars. Is he? No, he didn't wind up. Who wound up being the richest man in the world recently? Bezos. Bezos, right. Bezos. But, but yeah. I mean, he doesn't have... 16. But he doesn't have a giant chunk of money, but he has enough 
that he was able to pull this off and I think did it way cheaper than NASA ever did it. Right. Well, you think of how much the computers cost back when we went to just to the moon. You know that when you hold an iPhone in your hand, you have the power that would have cost you a, a million dollars back in the 60s. It would yeah. have cost you a, a, several yeah. million. Well, Apple would like that's to charge that, we... but they can't get away with it. So yeah. I remember yeah, that's why... That's why they're able to land these. Uh, they have so much technology, and, and it's so condensed now they can land these rockets back on the, on the ground. Yeah. I remember about 74, I bought a, I think it was a Commodore calculator. They just added, multiplied, subtracted, and uh, it, it ran on batteries, and I think it was three or $400, you know, the ones that you can buy today for a buck ninety nine, and And right. that's overpaying by a buck. Yeah. <laughs> and, yep. Here, yeah. com here comes our good friend Kevin, yet another beard on the program. Boy, your beard is getting even longer, isn't it? You letting it grow out more? Huh? No, I just haven't shaved. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I'm trying to grow one. Over here, it's a little sp getting, it's spotty still, but here it's kind of, can you see it all? Yeah, yeah well, anyway. Uh, 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 but uh, you have a, just a great beard, so does... Uh, our friend uh, Jeff. Let me go to you, Kevin. Did you see the rocket today? Yeah, did I did. That? As a matter of fact, it was did, pretty cool. Did, did how about uh, did the did the what can we call it? The curtain call at the end where the two of them landed just amaze you. That was cool shit. And my <laughs> cousin was down there in Cocoa Beach and saw the whole thing. Wow. Sent me a video and to see that thing, those two boosters come down and just rest themselves onto the uh, landing pad was just i thought that uh, that's cool shit i like to watching that can stuff. they reuse those boosters yes that that's why they, yeah. that's why they're doing they're, it they're ready yeah. to go back yeah before uh, it, they used to reuse the boosters uh at nasa but what they'd have to do is if they didn't sink go out to the ocean and pick them up yeah you know, I thought if that they was could find the that they picked up, but the boosters would disintegrate. No, no, they they landed in the water, and sometimes mm -hmm. they would retrieve them and reuse them. But if they mm -hmm. couldn't they, find I, them or they sunk too far, uh, you know, they sunk, then they didn't retrieve them. Here, you've got an absolute. You've retrieved them. You know, yeah. they're down there. All you got to do is slide another rocket in there, fill them up, and go again. Hey, I, I got a question for the panel. Yeah. How many people experimented with ST's rockets, model rockets, when they were a teenager? Well, nah, well yeah, 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 those one, yeah. Yeah, we did that back in the, in the 60s. And, you know, five, six years from now, hopefully he'll be able to sell ST's rockets that come right back to you. Yeah. And then blow up. That would be cool. Well, we used to put M M80s. And explosives on that on, as a payload, <laughs> and try to get it to explode at, at the top of the arc. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, yeah. uh, I remember I once. Think I still it, got some in my garage. Here, here's how stupid a kid I was. Okay, when I was when I was a kid, this is I I wanted to do a, a little rocket thing because I wanted to be an astronaut before there was even the concept of an astronaut, and I. Uh, I wanted to make a little rocket to take off, and the only way I could figure out was to make a little rocket and then in it insert one of those little compressed air bottles, right? Now, yeah. conceivably, that should work, right? There was Except just... blows up the no, there thing. Was, there was no way to puncture the, the thing because, you know, this went into like seltzer bottles and things like that. No way to puncture it and then get it to take off, so I gave up my idea. You know. when, I, when I think of the stupid things I did as a kid, I took pieces of pipe, I filled them up with matches, and then I oh. put a fence and I oh. lit them on fire and threw them. You, you realize what I was making was a pipe bomb. I could have been a member of the SDS, but, you know. The SDS, uh, you mean? The, uh, uh, you may have been a dead one. Too. ISIS. Uh, my dad had a gas station, and a couple of guys that worked at the gas station did that, and they were pounding matches, match heads into a little piece of pipe. Yeah. And, did and they kept up? pounding and pounding and pounding, and eventually, yeah, they compressed and exploded, and one guy ended up in the hospital with six stitches in this, his ball sack. Wow. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. God. 
<laughs> he ends up with the. It was not. It there. was not pretty. I just, yeah. I just think I it's guys that used to light their farts on fire. I mean, maybe that. Uh... <laughs> I, I think it's amazing that Everybody Elon Musk that. had to start start from zero. Dude. He had to he had to start from the beginning, and literally figure out this rocketry. You know, I mean, there were some things that had been established. But he didn't want to do it that way because he wanted to do it so that it was more reasonably priced because he couldn't afford to build a NASA-style rocket. And so what he did is he brought this thing all down to kind of a business level. And I don't know how much this uh, rocket cost him today to take off, but it wasn't anything near what it used to call, uh, cost NASA. $90 million. $90 he million? Car, is, he got the car wholesale. Is that, but, hey, $90 how, million? Was that the How, price that you heard? Yeah, ninety million for this launch. What did he own that he sold to get his money? He, it was some computer thing. Was it PayPal? Or uh, I think it was uh, PayPal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know. I used to work for servant. Uh, sold him all the the helium and the hydrogen and the nitrogen for the for the SpaceX down in L.A. for that place. Right. We sold all that all that product to him. Still do. Yeah, but I, I think he I think he did start at PayPal. I, yeah. I do believe. Yeah. So uh, I wonder how much he got. Uh, was it eBay that bought PayPal? Uh, I wonder how much he got for that, and and he and he's parlayed that into well. Then he some then, he's, then, he's, then he started Tesla, and the, right. the Tesla sold okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, his million pro billion probably came from PayPal. I would imagine. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. Still, he hasn't made the money from these things. He's but he's spending. Still, this is all I think. Is it my imagination, or can we buy stock in in SpaceX? You can buy stock in Tesla. Yeah, yeah you can Tesla, but, that, but I'm not sure about SpaceX yet. Because you know, where's he getting the money for this? Is it all coming out of his pocket? And I think uh, the answer is probably much. probably yes. But, you know, uh, I think that Musk will be, in the end, a very wealthy man for what he's doing. Maybe not in his lifetime, but eventually uh, his patents will uh, uh, certainly... Oh, this uh, patent now for this rocket? Come on. It's gold. Yeah. It's just gold. Plus, he's already been making money, you know, taking payloads up to the space station. And he's developing batteries that last longer, and that, that's, that's the key. Well, that's that only so your car about. will go longer than 25 minutes on well, a charge. Not, yeah, but it's not just the car. It, it's, it's uh, you know, batteries uh, can uh, bring uh, life and, and energy to areas yeah. of the well, world that we'll show have you how good he, let's, power. We'll show you how good he's doing with that project. How long did you say it would be before the batteries run out on the space, uh, SpaceX rocket? I think he said twelve hours. He 12, said twelve hours. hours. Well, then I think that's about yeah. that's about a par for Tesla, you know. Yeah, but he'll have a refilling station up there shortly. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a. Uh, there, there is a yeah, but he's got he's got solar and he's got uh, home batteries and that sort of thing going on too, right? Can you imagine in these far reaches of the world that uh, you could bring power uh, through battery and solar? Uh, to these places and, you know, electrify areas that have been out in the middle of nowhere for uh, and, you know, and change people's lives. Yeah. But that's I, the stuff he's doing right now. Yeah. I just think it's I, I think it's amazing. And I think that that shot of the Tesla as literally the the, the nose cone opened up. And now <laughs> that Tesla is literally the front of the rocket. I think that's so cool. <laughs> it's the best advertising campaign of, ever. Ever. And you know something? He deserves it. That's my opinion. Right, And, and he did it right after the Super Bowl when everybody's thinking about talking about the commercials. Yeah, well, Very good timing. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you somebody else who had good timing. Um, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, uh, Jenner. Uh, the, one of the daughters. One of the Jenner. <laughs> Uh, pregnant? Yeah, the, 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 just had her baby. <laughs> yeah, and she had Kylie. Kylie. She had it on Thursday. Okay, didn't tell anybody. Right, waited till Sunday, Super Bowl day, and mm -hmm. then she announced it on a, a Twitter feed. And of course, the Twitterverse went crazy, and the Super Bowl was taking a 
a, a, a back seat to Kendall Jenner. I mean, it's amazing. She knew exactly what to do. Hey, we had the baby too early. Wait till Sunday. Well, then we'll release the news on it. They said that you couldn't tell she was pregnant. Is that because the baby, instead of having a baby belly, she had a, uh, one of those Jenner tushies, and uh, that's where she carried it? Uh, well, that's not a Jenner tushie. That's a Kardashian Joke tushie. in the trunk? <laughs> oh, it's a Kardashian tushie. Yeah. Well, yeah. she's half Kardashian. You know. Well, yes. You know, the, the only improvement is if she would have named the baby Dilly Dilly. Oh, well, how is that? <laughs> It's from the the commercial. Oh, what uh, commercial? the Budweiser commercial? They say dilly dilly. dilly it went dilly. viral. Now I didn't understand that Budweiser commercial. They were talking about how they're donating water in Budweiser cans, but uh, it didn't. Uh, you know, it, it didn't make a lot of sense. Well, no, yeah. it didn't. It made Hurricane. a lot of sense. What they were trying to do is say, "Hey, we're giving we we give water in tragedies," and I know. The need for that, because when we had our, our little situation in San Francisco back in the Loma Prieta quake, which I was, you know, out of my house and home for a couple of days, they, they went around passing water, not Budweiser, but somebody else, and it was terrible water in a can. And so yeah. probably what they're doing is they're putting out really nice water and they're giving, canning it and giving it away. And I they're, think also, they're also saying that they're going to give uh, everybody in Philadelphia free Bud, White or Bud Light on uh, the, the parade day, and they ought to put water in it that day because them yeah. bastards are tearing the shit out of Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah you, don't want, you don't want those people drinking. Okay. No, no. <laughs> San Francisco won the, uh, a couple of uh, uh, Super Bowls. Uh, the local San Franciscans got just as crazy, and they were burning police cars and. Uh, yeah, but they weren't the eating. They weren't eating horse shit. <laughs> no, uh, well, we we don't have those Philly cheesesteaks here. Yeah, <laughs> but it. Uh, you, you, nuts. You, you know, um, I I I watch some of the commercials, and I think the best com to me the best commercial. Uh, pro uh, program that they had, the uh, uh, campaign they had, uh, was tied. Yeah. Because they did a constant thing. They bought a, a lot of time to run these little commercials saying, you know, this is an ad for Tide, even though they made it look like an ad for something else. Did they have any kids chewing on those little Tide popper no, balls? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but I thought I thought that was good. Uh, but the ad supposedly that was the most popular ad of the Super Bowl was the Alexa ad. Yeah. Uh, you know what the worst part of the Super Bowl was? That Justin Timberlake. Oh, the, even oh, the kid in the audience outshined just, uh, Justin Timberlake. I, I, to begin he with, to begin talent. with. Now, how many people saw the halftime show? Would you raise your hand? Uh, really? We're we're the only ones, huh? Uh, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I wasn't impressed. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, was he terrible or what? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, he was better. He was a Disney disjointed. Kid. You know, I, I think he didn't have any sleep, you know, and, and he came out there and he was just operating in, in, uh, slow-mo, you know, uh, he, just, just you, you, terrible. You know, it might've been good if you were there live. As far as a halftime show, it might've been good, but it was not good on TV. No. Secondly, did anybody notice the sound was terrible. You couldn't hear him. That was yeah, uh, well, that, because he wasn't singing. It was probably uh, well, uh, oh, what do no, they call uh, it? No, if it was if it was pre-recorded, if it was pre-recorded, you would have heard him because they would have balanced it out when they recorded it. But the he was. I mean, it, did anybody feel that way when they listened to it? Yeah, you should have been there running the boards for him, Alex. Yeah. No, I mean the I yeah. you know the very low sound on him. And then the thing with Prince, you know what the story is with that? They didn't want they were going to do a hologram. They were going to do a hologram, and he ditched it at the last minute because Sheila E. Uh, said to him that in an interview in like 1996 or something like that, somebody right. said, would you right. want to be on stage doing a song with somebody else like Natalie Cole did with her father? And he said, "No, that's that would be de that would be a demon-like behavior." Uh, and he was against using dead people to sing along with. 
Uh, <laughs> and and so it, it, Justin decided not to run the hologram, but he did run a video of him up there. Uh, and I did. Oh, yeah. And, and I, the family was happy with the the way he did do it. I think they were they were okay with it. They didn't like the hologram, though. Yeah. Now, did anybody say, you know, Prince was black and the sheet was white and it was kind of like KKK? Uh, you know. <laughs> Boy, you find, you're trying hey, to find a hey, joke Phil, everywhere, aren't you, Phil? Phil's been, <laughs> Phil's been going to too many John Birch meetings. I, wait a minute. Are you there, Scott? I bring my own sheet. <laughs> he disappeared. Scott, are you there? We have no power again. It just went out. Oh, really? <laughs> we'll take care of that. That's why we why we're seeing you in the dark. Yeah, it's very dark here. I can't I can't bring up the video on you guys, but uh, well, how are you doing it with no electricity? Is this uh, Must battery backup? Are you using an iPad or something or an iPhone or something like that? Yeah, iPod. Yeah, so I won't be here too long. I've got to go figure out. Yeah, what's going on with the world around us? So I just I didn't I didn't quit. Yeah, I just. Is there weather issues in Texas? Well, it's it's cold and it was rainy and sleety, but uh, I don't think this is weather related. I don't know. Yeah, oh, maybe so it I'm is. Just wondering if Jack and Amy are going to have a show. If uh, there's oh uh, no, yeah, it, it, it's very local here. That's oh. good, that's why the power came on so quick the last time because it's it's uh, just our substations effed up. Gee, Elon Musk could get you back online. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, going to definitely think about going solar here pretty quick. Don't you back have a back. hybrid car? Uh, uh, is your uh, Lincoln a hybrid? Yes, it is. Oh, well, why don't you back it up to the computer and uh, plug in? You know? the, uh, or to the house. I don't think it, it, would, it wouldn't drive I, it very long. I, I, don't, no. I don't think you can oh, use we'll a hot. What? Our power just came back on. Oh, well, you, you, you still don't have any picture. Uh, it's because my... Uh, I, I'm still on my hotspot, though. Oh, I see. Is that... Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait a Let me minute. get some lights on here. Can you see me yet? There, there we go. No, you can't see me. No, there we can see you. I'll, we, I'll no, we, can, we can see no, you. We can see you. We see you now. We see you now. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. Well, I can't see you guys. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, I, you don't want to see anyway. us. We're very ugly. We're an ugly group of people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this, I know what Patrick really is saying. For the, uh, Speak for yourself. Systems. Uh, anyway, um, so anyway, let's talk about another elephant in the room. Uh, first of all, let's go around the panel here. Uh, Kevin, how much money did you lose in the last couple of days? I didn't even look. I just waited for it to come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't back yet. Well, it's, it's coming. Back they say it's coming. Points. Oh, 500 points? Correction. Do you know how much it went down? 1157? 11, no, that was one day. Yeah. Over the it's week, it was close to 2,000 points. Yeah, but you know, when you look at it, uh, it, the percentage, I think, was 8%. No, no, no. Forget about the percentage because what you're oh, talking about. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's talk about actual dollars because that's what people lose. They didn't lose percentages. Mm -hmm. The percentage you're talking about is because back when it was eight thousand uh, dollars, eight thousand points was the Dow average. Uh, yes, this would have been a larger percentage than now when it's uh, it was twenty six and change. All right, uh, well, but, but, the, but the point is, the point is, it still lost a lot of money for everybody who was invested in it and it has Billions. and they don't care about that percentage well in 1929 what caused the uh disaster the market was in the 300s i think and i think it had a 20 percent correction uh I, I believe that's from the best of my memory uh and that's what caused the crash but they're saying that it would have had to been uh, uh, at least a 10 or 15 percent correction to turn around to a uh, 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 bear market. You know, uh, so we're still a bull bull bullshit with correction. Bullshit with your percentage. The fact is that people I lost, I would say, easily two thousand dollars in the last week. Okay? Well, you'll get it back in your tax refund from Trump. But yeah, right. Right. I'm not getting a tax refund from Trump. OK. Um, the point is that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, there goes your, by the way, that there goes your, if you have a 401k, 
there goes your little raise in pay, okay? You just got eaten up by this this disaster. And we haven't heard boo from the son of a bitch either. You haven't no, heard he boo. didn't say anything about it. He didn't say anything. And you know something? Nobody would blame him if he hadn't sat uh, sat around saying, look how good the stock market is doing. Exactly. Look how good the it, stock market is it doing. It still is. Did you hear what Kennedy said? Yeah, he heard that. He wanted to blame it on Obama. <laughs> it's still up 30% since the first of the year, even with no, this no, correction. No. Excuse me. We lost. No. We lost all the no, no all I'm out. sorry. We lost everything since the first of the year. I heard that statistic yesterday, yeah, yep. and I, I heard, heard it today. again today. You that I don't know where you're listening because that's false information. Since, because, since his election, it might be up thirty percent, but not the well, first yeah. of the year. Okay, since since his election, it's up thirty percent still, even with the correction. So you know, hey, 20, yeah, twenty eight percent. And Obama was up thirty five percent. Yeah, well, anybody could be Obama up when was you're up for five thousand down. Wait a minute, Obama, he's no, right. We're talking percents now. Everything, all the the touchstones that uh, uh, Trump has been stating, like black unemployment and uh, uh, you know the stock market, and so on. All those metrics were better under Obama than they have been since Trump took office. Hey, Alex, I got a question. Fool yourself. You know, well, I'm not fooling myself. That's pure statistics, Phil. Just go look it up. It, am I right, um, uh, Tim? Am I, uh, am I speak? Well, I work, for the I work for the government for 37 years, and I know that Trump and everybody in his administration lies. They have basically people working for the White House embedded in all the agencies. I so do not trust his numbers. I don't Tim, trust the numbers come out of the, of the you know, department. You know, you know the last words that anybody wants to hear? I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, except, uh, except uh, except Phil just hurricane. laughed at the yeah. world's oldest joke. I think yeah. that I think Will Rogers wrote that joke. Yeah. Uh, uh, here, here's the uh, thing. But I don't think that I, I think they're 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 adjusting the numbers slightly. The, you know, the, and, well, the latest uh, thing is kind of interesting is that. His lawyers don't want him to talk to, uh, what's his name? Uh, to uh, uh, Miller. Miller. Uh, huh? Yeah. Miller. M uh, Mueller. Mueller. They don't want him to talk to Mueller. You know why they don't want him to talk to Mueller? Because he is prone to lying. And no. they're afraid he will lie under oath. They are afraid. No, no, no. no. Yes, he yes, yes. yes. Lies the last yes. time he testified. So, so, those, those 30 specific indicted. lies. Those other guys got indicted because they said one thing in one meeting and they said something else in no, another. Phil, and Phil I'm saying lying. this is why his lawyers are trying to avoid him talking to Mueller is because he lies. Even if he feels he's going to go in and they tell him, here's what you say, don't say this, don't do that. They're afraid he just doesn't listen to that, that he will just get, he will just be there and lie. Some and then all they got to catch him is in one lie, and that right. man is indicted. Right, exactly. You, you, so you, why you, put you yourself about, in that situation? You because, you're, he's go, he, because, wait a minute, because he's going to have to. If he refuses to, then then, then Mueller I'll will subpoena, subpoena him. So, huh? Did you hear so, about Sessions? What about Sessions? Well, he's been touting the statistics about how much crime is committed by illegal aliens. Mm -hmm. And they found out just today that there's mathematical errors in their statistics, and it's not true at all. Like that foot football player that just got killed by the illegal alien twice, uh, jumped the border. Hey, Phil, Phil don't waste your time with anecdotes. No, it happened, happened today. Now. It happened today. No, I know, but don't, don't, I understand, but don't throw in anecdotes when they're talking about the government lying to us on statistics. Yeah. Okay. The fact that real life happens has no bearing on the fact that they're measuring it wrong and using it to push a racist immigration policy. Yep. Well, that's an antidote. So, how many white people have killed people with drunk driving last week? But they weren't illegal aliens. Doesn't matter. They're still Plus dead. Stuff. If the guy wasn't he was deported. Dead. Dead. Quite deported. Dead. That means. There's dead, a hole in the wall. Dead, 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 
Dead. How many people are killed with guns every fucking day? Damn Come it. feel the bite of my sword. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> That's one of my uh, things on uh, the sound uh, effects. No, oh well, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it did. It did. It foster a laugh. No, it didn't. No. Yeah. No, no, it didn't. None of us laughed. There was a, there was a guffaw. Phil yeah. laughed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Phil I laughed. laughed. Yeah, I laughed. No, but but no, you're you're absolutely right, uh, Scott. I mean, you know, I mean, the, these statistics. I saw this whole thing about. I mean, he's trying to make a case against immigration because there, he says every case where somebody who was of Hispanic descent or Mexican or whatever committed Guatemala. some kind of crime here. But he doesn't mention all the other countries that people come here and commit crimes and do things. I mean, he is singling out a particular group and then using that as his major statistic. And, and, and then Kelly, you know, all these people are becoming like Trump. Kelly today demeaned immigrants, too, basically non-white immigrants, said they were too lazy to get up and go register with a government you can't trust from day to day. I was kind of surprised at that Kelly saying that shit today. Yeah. Kelly's family, when it came to this country, <laughs> they were Irish and they were treated. They were all non-skilled, and they were treated like low lives. We, this is a, a legacy we need to stop. Did somebody have to sponsor you when you came over through Ellis Island? Not, you have, have not all the time. No, 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 no. He, no. Let me explain that one to you, Phil. Uh, you had to if you came to El, if you came to the United States. Yeah. You could avoid Ellis Island if you had someone in the United States who was accepting you, uh, uh, accepting you, uh, mm -hmm. and and that was the reason. Like my father and his mother came through Ellis Island. I in fact I I found their the manifest where mm -hmm. they came through Ellis Island, uh, but they got out of there within a day, as most people did, oddly enough, because they had a place to go, which was California, where my f f grandfather was waiting for them with their other son, uh, Bolo. Um, and they were waiting in California and already made a home and everything for them. So they, they got out of there fast. That's what you're talking about. It had nothing to do with you couldn't get in if you didn't have somebody here sponsoring you. It just took a little longer for you, uh, a little maybe another day at Ellis Island, while you waited to be processed. By the way, if you were wealthy, if you had money, you didn't have to go to Ellis Island. You just sure. watched everybody get off the boat on Ellis Island, and then you went on right on into New York City. Well, my or you could go to, or, or here's, the, here's the other option. You could go to one, one of Gerald Kushner's seminars in China, and he was selling citizenship. What, what, what? We're not talking about that. We're talking about Ellis Island here. Yeah. Well, I, don't know. I know, but that's how you do it nowadays. If so, the rich people can do it, the rich people get yeah. away with it. No, the, right. the, the, when, you, when your father uh, got off the boat... Uh, no, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a second, Phil. Patrick is get looking very anguished here. Yes, P P P Patrick. I'm just mouthing, what the fuck? <laughs> that, that's all it was. Oh. It's a conspiracy, Patrick. But uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's kind of like when Tony changes topics, or, or sometimes you feel it's just it's so bizarre hearing Alex on one topic and then somebody will take it. Yeah, it's all of a sudden it's Gerald Kushner selling. Uh, oh, that's because we take this ramble thing. We take this ramble thing at its at its name. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should t call it the We Stay on Topic show or something. <laughs> hey, that, that changes the whole outcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, yeah. you, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking. Looks like Kevin wants to say something. He had his yes, hand. Kevin. No, it's just my head exploding. Oh, oh. I see. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyway. I just went out and I bought 40... K cups of Big Bang Pete's Big Bang coffee, which I just love. Now I just read about. I don't know. That. Now talk about it's... going off topic. There right. you go. There you go. It's a medium. <laughs> I looked it up. It said Big Bang is a medium roast. Now, uh, don't you? You like the? Fu I like the full. It full is. Bottle. It is such a good tasting coffee. 
Yeah. That I love it. I just love it. I love it. I love it better than Major Dickinson's or whatever that's called. Major Dickinson's. Major Dickinson, but uh, Major Dickinson's a medium body also. Yeah. The, but the French roast is a full body. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I I love the Big Bang. It is just it's great and it, it's great coffee. So. Yeah. This, by the way, this program tonight has been brought to you by Pete's Big Bang. Uh, you finally got a sponsor. Actually, that's not what I had here, though. Sponsor. This is, uh, this is uh, uh, Starbucks Pike Roast, because I had a lot of them left over, and I want to get rid of them. Yeah. So. Uh, you know what I bought? You know what I bought? Changing the topic. Oh, yes. Do you have your hand up there, uh, uh, Bob? No. Yeah. yeah. While we're changing the topic, mm -hmm. did you hear what uh, Trump did today? Oh, and, He's and ordered wait, the wait, military wait. to give him a fucking, a, parade. a fucking parade with the tanks and the missiles and the jet flyovers. No. Just in <laughs> Washington, D.C. In you know, D.C. You want to know something, though? We don't have the tar, the turf or the area to do that kind of thing. In China, for instance, Tiananmen Square. Or, you know, or, or in North Korea, they've actually got this whole street that's really wide. The Kremlin, same thing, for doing that kind of parade. We, uh, we're going to have like well, a bunch he, of missiles. He wants that, to do it on Pennsylvania Avenue and make sure it passes his hotel. Yeah, and oh. uh, no, but what happens is if, if he does it, it the missiles are going to have to go single file. <laughs> You know, what's, that, what's that pool where they had the uh, the uh, women's march and the million man thing that's right outside of uh, yeah, the Yeah, but Capitol? that's not the place. You, you can't have a parade the there. You they'll can't. fill that in and they'll do the parade there. Yeah, okay. Yes, Kevin. Yeah. Washington Mall or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 You know what else happened today? Yeah, oh, boy. They, they passed, the, the House passed the huge uh, military budget, didn't they? I guess. Now he, can, that's, now he can have his parade. It's I don't going to cost the, millions. I don't think the budget passed yet. They uh, passed. I, I think the House voted on it. Oh, the House. Including, 17, the Senate now. That's including right. 17 Democrats. What really? is this? Is, what is, is, going to be another, to is this, the is this going to be another three-week budget? Uh, I don't know. Uh, probably. Yeah. yeah, it's a three-week budget. And uh, funny is the Democrats tried to continue the military benefits during the last shutdown, but McConnell would let him vote on that amendment. I thought the military was still getting paid. Uh, well, they did get paid, but they were going to. They was going to eventually stop temporarily, and then some of the survivors and widows and stuff. But the Democrats tried to take that out and say, "No, don't stop those benefits," and McConnell wouldn't let him vote on that <laughs> as as part of uh, as an amendment. Yeah. Well, so anyway. they're the ones that kept the military from getting. The benefit if it would have lasted very long i left i lived through a two-week yeah. one well anyway There's getting no. back to all the money i've lost in the last couple of days anybody else mm -hmm. lose did you lose some jeff of course <laughs> does, does that you, mean you don't want to buy my mac mini <laughs> <laughs> oh i'll still buy your mac mini <laughs> well i actually gave some couple uh, weeks i a couple of weeks ago i took some money off the market but it wasn't enough <laughs> no, it wasn't enough for no, this one. No, it wasn't. But uh, hopefully some of it will come back. I don't know. Well, my, my friend Shecky, the, who, who does have some money, said, uh, I don't even want to tell you how much I've lost in the last couple of days, he said. But he says, I look at it this way. He says, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. You know, and you, you, uh, you know as to whether this is going to get up to the level it was at, we don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'm certainly better off than I was th three, four years ago in the market. Um, I don't have a lot, but, you know, I had my, a, 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 enough that I lost like about two grand over the last couple of days, my maybe more. My ex-wife was the investor in that family, and she had balls of steel. It didn't matter what the market did. She said, no, nah, I'm not going to get out. You know, uh, and, you know, I, I never had those kinds of colonies that I, I could uh, last with the up and ups and the downs. Well, you don't you don't sell in a market like this. You you got to just, you know, if you didn't get out before it, then you got to stick with it. Well, what happens? Otherwise, is you're going to lose out. more. What? They get out when it drops and then they don't get back in until it's too high again. And uh, yeah, well, that's the point. 
The point yeah. is, you can't you can't get rid of your stock once it's going once it's tanking like crazy, because you it, you're, you're, then you're going. It's it's like uh, hey, you know, if you, it's like uh, James Dean. You die at a certain age, and everybody remembers you that way. Well, you get out of the stock market at a certain point, and it's like you died. You know, right. you you that you got that much money back. But if you just waited it out, you probably would go back up. I mean. Um, Hell, I mean, I wish uh, years ago that I had, and I would thought about it, that I had had the guts to buy Sirius XM stock when it went, went down to five cents. Because if I just mm -hmm. bought $10,000 worth, worth of it, uh, fuck all of y'all, I'd be living in Spain right now. Yeah, but you it know? Also, I mean, you'll get a few pennies for you to lose it all. No, you know? no. Well, yes, that, that was, but I could afford the 10 grand. I actually yeah. could, uh, and it was worth the try. If I had done the ten grand, then it's now six dollars and fifteen cents. How many? How much money would I have made? I would, would have made two hundred thousand dollars per dollar. So I would Almost have made. I would, have, I, would have, I would have made about a million and a quarter dollar, a million and a quarter off of off of uh, Sirius So XM. the guy that that came in with the infusion of money. Uh, into Sirius and yeah. got all of that stock. Mm -hmm. What's he worth? You know? Oh, he he bought forty percent of Sirius at the time, at five cents a share. Wow. Uh, I think he's gotten rid of some of it. He was the guy who uh, has like stars, and uh, he was a Long Island cable operator. I'm trying to remember his name now. And he came in and he bought, he, what he did is he said, I'll give you an infusion of money, but I want 40% of the company. And they gave him 40% of the company. And then he tried to get the majority stock in the company, but he somehow couldn't get it, you know. But he made a fortune. He made a lot of, he made a lot of money. Hmm. Billions. Well, I would say he made a couple of billion. Yeah. 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 So, you know. Yeah. But uh, you know, all I'm saying is, is that I think I think we would love to hear something from Trump about the stock market, but we're he not said, going to today. Fundamentals, huh? The fundamentals of our economy are strong, and uh, this is what uh, makes you say that. Yeah, yeah he did. The uh, fundamentals are strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well, that's the kind of thing. If you're going to be presidential. You, that you, you say when there's uh, times that uh, people are nervous. There you know, are you better try to assure there, the public. There are better things you can say than that. You know, uh, you you can give them a lecture on things go up, things go down. Uh, you were just going through a boom period. You're probably better off now than you were before it started. Just uh, hang in there. Just hang in there, that. and let's keep our economy strong by not selling off and calm people down that way. But oh, no, that, he's not even going that far. He's right, not well, even mentioning that this is happening. Although, I, I, I just uh, have to say one thing sort of off topic. Michael Savage is promoting Bitcoin. Well, you have to talk about who Michael Savage is because most people here do. You guys it's know who Michael Savage is? right wing uh, I know is. talk show guy. Yeah. He's uh, the opposite and, of Charlie Savage. Uh, I don't know. Who well, what's his name? Uh, my guy at uh, the, the the liberal guy who I can't stand. Yeah, is selling gold. Uh, well, sells Savage, gold like crazy. Yeah. Savage selling that same guy gold and Bitcoin. So, you know, I mean, if you got somebody telling you uh, a lot of sh every day I read cryptocurrency is going to blow up. Isn't isn't Bitcoin down to eight dollars a Bitcoin now? And uh, it was up uh, around I, several I, hundred a Bitcoin. It's up to like twenty thousand or something like that, and I think maybe it's down to ten or twelve. But uh, I saw seven thousand today. Oh, seven thousand. So, oh, yeah. uh, when the owner, when the guy who started Bitcoin sold all the stuff off about a month ago, I knew it was the end. You know? uh, yeah, he sold all his Bitcoin. The guy who started Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, you're not insured on anything. In Bitcoin. Somebody said that the idea of Bitcoin isn't a bad idea. Okay. It's just the implementation of it and the fact that it is in the hands of people who can use it for evil, you know. And that's ca that's capitalism yeah. without regulation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. I, I heard a, an analogy with the, uh, Bitcoin and the right to what Mark Cuban did 
when he sold um, what was it, broadcast? Broadcast.com. Yahoo, where it was nothing. There was no tangible anything. It was basically an idea. And then every radio station went, well, we can broadcast on the Internet ourselves. Why do we need this? And then it just became yeah, nothing. He, he was <laughs> somewhat tangible in that I remember Broadcast.com, and I do remember that they had a lot of stations on Broadcast.com and so on that they were you know, then, repurposing. Then the individual station... Yeah. And the company said, well, we can do this on our own. Well, we you see, need- it, it's to Mark Cuban's credit that he knew this. Right. And when they yeah. wanted to buy it, I think they bought it for like $3 billion or something. Yeah. He took yeah. it right immediately. And he took it. And within months, the bottom fell out of the Silicon Valley stocks. And Yahoo was stuck with a turkey. Right. They could- that's exactly like with Bitcoin, when the, when the creator pulls out of it, you have to look at it and go, hmm, I wonder, because there, there's nothing there. I mean, it, it, I don't think anybody really understands it even now after we've had all of these months of, of learning about it going up and up and up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, well, it's, it, it's based on blockchain. blockchain. Does right. everybody know what blockchain is? No. Yeah. It's, it's a way of keeping track of transactions uh, in, a, in a homogenous manner where you, when, when all the, when this transaction is, is connected to all the other transactions, so it's hard to commit direct fraud unless you hack into a server. And it's a way to verify transactions worldwide uh, that's, if you use the scientific, it's very good. It's like, it's like giving a best audit trail possible for every transaction that takes place. The problem is they don't have any auditors to audit the audit trail. Well, I mean, but, but we, also, also, regulate. also, yeah, it, 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 there's no regulation there. The trouble also is that the people using Bitcoin were uh, international drug dealers, uh, I mean, the, the, the people, people from the dark net, the, the dark net was benefiting from uh, from Bitcoin. Uh, yes, Patrick. Well, and, and the other issue with that type of uh, currency is if the value fluctuates as much as it does. I mean, if, if you were to go buy a car using Bitcoin for thirty thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars, and then the bottom falls out on it, you made out well, but the dealership just got screwed because what they perceived to get as sixty thousand dollars is now worth what ten? You know, it, it, so there's no, it isn't. It's not a tangible enough thing like actual money, and I hate to say it, like gold or silver, mm-hmm. where. There's something there to back it. Yeah. Well, so, yes, now you're turning it in. Now we're the Tom Hartman program. Well, t- Tom Hartman yeah. was selling gold. I mean, I hated this I know. guy. It's, it's ter- you're starting to sound like uh, Tom Hartman show. But if Madoff was still alive, Madoff, he'd be doing commercials for him. There, there were guys doing point. this stuff. A long well, listen, time listen. Ago. Tom ha- Tom Hartman is this guy who considers himself a great liberal. The day I heard him selling gold, I, I started giving him a bad time on Sirius. Right. Uh, that, you know, right. well, let's all sell gold. And boy, gold's a great idea. Yes, Tom, push your fucking gold. And then, because he can't get his TV show broadcast anywhere, he's over at the Russian network. Well, you, you know you know who had his 200th birthday yesterday and uh, was one of the, he used to print his own currency, was Emperor Norton. Uh, yeah. and <laughs> Emperor Norton was this street guy, I guess. You could call him just a He, a, he came out for the gold rush, and he lost all his money. Yeah, and so, and he, so he, he declared himself emperor of the world. Yeah, and then he, he put out his own money. He would pass out his own money. And people would take it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he was also the guy that said he thought that they should build the Bay Bridge to, to Oakland. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, let's face it. I think if you had an Emperor Norton coin today, it'd actually be worth something. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. so that's kind of like the first Bitcoin. 
It's kind of like the first bit, Bitcoin. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, Bitcoin has no. I've 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 watched a whole documentary on Bitcoin, and I don't get it. Okay, it just doesn't mm -hmm. seem logical to me. What is it? It's a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Well, if you got out of it a couple of weeks ago, you were probably in good shape. Same with Ponzi schemes. But where do you cash it that, in? That's, that's what I don't Ponzi understand. Scheme. What do you convert it to? Cash? Yeah, the money. Uh, they, they, Matt uh, uh, from Baltimore used to call up and say yeah. that he was buying Litecoin or something. Litecoin or something like that. And the reason I don't think he's called lately is he can't afford to. No, 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 no. He, he <laughs> sold, I, told, I, I, I kept telling me, I said, sell that shit. Get out of it. You know, and, and not that I'm a great <laughs> investor. I don't have anything to invest. But, you know, uh, I said, just get out of it. You made some money. Be happy. Cash yeah. in. Yeah. And like, hey, like, hey, Phil, I'm, I'm mad at Phil for telling me to sell my SpaceX stock <laughs> <laughs> last week. Thanks, Phil. Do you have SpaceX stock? And is there no, SpaceX I, stock? Did anybody know how, how much did it go up? I couldn't find it. I don't even think there is stock I for SpaceX. Think, I don't think it's public. They were going to have stock. I I think they do now. They're, the company is, is, is uh, valued at $21 billion or something like that. But I couldn't... Yeah. In a, I think well, they're just, stock now. They just lost their Tesla. It's up in space somewhere. Yeah. yeah I, I, hope you had, I hope he had it insured. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wonder if it had the deluxe interior. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw an article where he could have insured the rocket, but he didn't. Well, he didn't yep, you know why? If you insure the rocket, it's a very expensive insurance. I mean, yeah, it's like building. It probably the half the cost of the rocket. I would say it was it was a, a nice chunk of change, and I think maybe he was saying, I, "Look, I think he knew this was going to be a success, and I'll tell you why. Because he was telling everybody, there's a fifty percent to two thirds chance right. that it'll work." And I went, "Oh man, he's not giving it great odds, you know." But no. I think he was doing that because he wanted to lower everybody's expectations. So when you saw this goddamn thing, you went, fuck, <laughs> you know. Yeah, because they've overplayed their hand with Tesla a little bit. And they're, Tesla didn't always deliver like they promised. So I think he was being careful. I, I mean, think they're having growing pains. You know, they sold a lot of cars and it's tough for them to deliver. Uh, uh, the other option is maybe he got the stock to go down a few dollars right before the launch that way, and he bought up a little bit more stock. Well, I I, I don't know about that, you know. No, no, but you could yeah. in some instances, but I don't think you did. Space, with, with, space is, 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 there, is there anything, Tim, that you can say to us that isn't a conspiracy? <laughs> no, 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 just I don't think it happened. You just have to keep an idea on you know, who, no, but who you, 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 you try to find you company. try to find a conspiracy in everything. Yeah. Well, I used to listen to Art Bell. I guess that's my, part of my. Oh, problem. that that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, you, have you met Art Bell? No, I've never met Art Bell, uh, but uh, I don't think anyone has. How about George? <laughs> He's who? still in his bunker. George, George, I think, still runs it, doesn't he? George, who? George. Yeah. George uh, Costanza. <laughs> Norrell, no, no, it's coast to coast with George Norrie or something. Norrie like or something. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I used to listen to that thing when I'd be traveling late at night in Northern California. That's what I did too. And, yeah. and, 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 and as I listened to him, I just went, you know, where it's dishonest, at some point he should say to somebody, you're full of shit. You know, but he never did. He just kept going. Anyway, yes, Phil. Anybody? Phil, what? Uh, what? You got your hand. According up. to uh, this, uh, space exploration technologies, better known as SpaceX, will go public once we have regular flight to Mars. Is uh, what he told investors in 2015. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, we're running out of time here, and I got to close this whole thing off. This has been a great show, you know, because it's just. Uh, yes, Jeff. Quickly. No, I was just going to say this is. It's a good, uh, good group. Yeah, good group. Good, good discussion. A little bit of everything, and it really, uh, right. you know, was spirited. Uh, Scott gets it spirited. Phil, you certainly bring the spirit up. Patrick, always a nice naysayer. Uh, Kevin, love hearing from you. Jeff, same to you. 
Bob, a little quiet tonight, but we loved having you sitting there and, and every now and then piping in. And of course, Tim, thank you for all the conspiracy we could eat tonight. <laughs> We really appreciate it. Hey, everybody, why don't you give yourself a big uh, wave goodbye to that uh, lovely audience that's watching you out there. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. That's it, folks. That's uh, all she wrote for tonight. Let me just, uh, as I say, as I always have to do, uh, turn off my, uh, my Skype so the next people can do a show. Okay. Let me, uh, yeah, there we go. We just got rid of them. Hey, listen, everybody, uh, I want to, first of all, before we go, I just want to remind you, if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe, okay? Subscribe to our channel, all right? Beyond that, it's Jack and Amy next with The Intersection, and right after that, at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, it's Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye.